Hi there, I'm Michael Fudge, and in this video, I'll demonstrate an end-to-end -end example of a program which converts temperatures from Celsius to Fahrenheit. In the end-to-end -end example series, we solve real-world problems with our code. We focus on the process, not the solution. This example is based on the content of Lesson 6, which covers functions. Functions allow us to break up larger programming problems into smaller ones. Like all end-to-end -end examples, I will write this program organically. I will not write this program in a single step. I'm going to make mistakes, I'm going to learn from them, revise my code, and continue programming just like in real life. I do very little editing in the video, and that's by design. This example will be in Jupyter Notebook. You're welcome to code along with me, and the code for this example can be found on GitHub. Here's the URL. I'll conclude by saying if that you're a student in my course, you have this code on your computer already. It's in your cloned repository. Let's get started. So you can see the example on my screen here. I'm going to do a conversion from either Fahrenheit to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit dependent on the inputs. And I also want to break this program up into functions so that I can use those functions to modularize my code or get me thinking about the complexity of my, of my code. So I think what I'll do first is I'm going to start out by, by once again, just reiterating what the problem is, trying to think of what the inputs and outputs are, and devise a strategy for writing the program. That's always the way you should start. All right, so the first thing I want to do in this program is I want to ask someone to input a temperature. So next they're going to input a unit, for example, Fahrenheit or Celsius. And then what I'm going to do is going to depend on which unit they've entered. For example, if they enter the unit, then I want to convert the temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Else if the unit is equal to Celsius, I'm just thinking this through here. So if they, you know, if you enter 212 degrees Fahrenheit, then I want to convert 212 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius, which I believe is 100 degrees Celsius. So I want to write the code that does that. Otherwise, if you enter a C, then I want to assume the temperature is in Celsius, and then I want to convert temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. For example, you enter in 0 degrees Celsius, and then I say, well, that's 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And then if you enter anything else, like you enter a W or an X or a Z, I'm just going to, you know, say, print, I'm going to print, you know, I can't convert that. All right, so that's my logic. Now, what I don't know how to do is I don't know how to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius or from Celsius to Fahrenheit. I don't know how to do that yet. I'm sure I can Google that or whatever your favorite search engine is and figure it out. But my point is, is you don't have to know how to do that to write the program. What you can do is you can write your program and your programming logic in a way that you, you promise to figure that out at some point, And then when you finally know it, then you do it. And so that's the approach that I'm going to take. And this is the value of functions is they give us this um, notion of a healthy abstraction. You can take code that you might not know how to do yet and then still write it up and say, well, I promise to figure this out at some other point, but I don't want it to get in the way of what I'm trying to do. All right, so in this cell, I'm going to start writing my code here. So let's do this temperature. Enter temperature. Um, and I probably want the temperature to be a float, right? So I forgot that. Um, you know, if I input it like this, it's just going to be a, of type string. So I want to convert it to a float like that. Let me turn the line numbers on. All right, next I want to grab the unit. Temperature is in which unit? And I'll just do FC like that. I guess I don't need two question marks. Let's see what I've got so far. Let's run that. Enter temperature 100. Temperatures in which unit? Um, Celsius. Okay. Now it's usually good practice to repeat back what the input was. So I'll do that. Print U entered percent. Let's say dot. 1f this time. I want to format the temperature onto one decimal place. And then percent %s for the unit. Let's put in, now I need to have, I promise two things, a float and a string. So I have those right there. The float is temp and the string is unit. Now I have, I'm not worried about, you know, 
try accept or handling runtime errors. I don't worry about any of that stuff right now. I'm just trying to get the problem figured out first. Then I'll add all the nice spit and polish to make it look lovely. Enter temperature, 100 Celsius. You entered 100 Celsius. Okay, good. So now I kind of know what I've got. Next, I need to go through and do this logic. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to write it as follows. I'm going to say if unit equals a C, right? Well, it says F first. If unit equals F. And then I need to convert the temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. See that right there? So I'm just going to put uh, to do convert F to C. L if unit equals C. To do convert C to F Celsius to Fahrenheit. Else you entered something that isn't an F or a C, so therefore I will print I cannot convert that. Okay. Now if I run it, you know, I'm getting a problem here because I'm not doing anything on line five or doing anything on line seven. I need to have something there. So here's the here's the new the new thing we're going to learn. We're going to make some functions. So what I'm going to do is above this, I need my functions to be before the code that uses them. I'm going to make a cell here and I'm going to create a function here. Now, functions are like little programs. This program has inputs and outputs. And the functions that I write have inputs and outputs. So let's think about this. If I write a function, if I write a function here called Celsius to Fahrenheit, what would the input be and what is the output going to be? Because every function should have some kind of input and output. So the input is going to be a temperature in Celsius and the output is going to be that temperature in Fahrenheit, right? That's how this function should work. All right, so now that I've kind of thought through my function, I can define it. So I'm going to say def, and I'm going to call it C2. Oh, I should be doing F to C first. I'm doing C to F right down here. See that? That's all right. I'll do this one first. C to F, and then I pass in a temperature, and that temperature is going to be uh, in Celsius, right? And right now what I'm going to say is pass. And I'll explain what this means in a second. So the name of the function is C to F. That's the command that executes this mini program I'm writing. And then whatever's in the parentheses, these are the inputs. These go into the function. They're also called the arguments. So it's saying you're going to give me something here, and I'm going to call it, Python's going to call it temp underscore in underscore C. And then what am I going to do with it? I'm going to do nothing with it. Pass just says do nothing. And this is a way for me to write code. And, you know, I don't really know what the formula is for this yet. Got to look it up. And let's do the same thing for C to F. So function F to C. It has an input of temperature in Celsius in Fahrenheit, and then it has an output of temperature in Celsius. And then I'm going to define this function as F to C temp in F. And then it's going to just pass for now. Pass just means do nothing. Okay. All right, let me run this. I run this code and it works, right? But when you define functions, it doesn't actually execute anything. It just adds something to the Python language that you can use later. To make this function go, I need to call it. So I'm going to call the functions down here. So this one I call F to C, right? So I'm going to say F to C. And then now I have to give it in here. The argument that I give it here has to match the parameter up here. Now this is a variable name, it's the value that matters, right? So what in this program am I going to send to F2C? It's the temperature, right? I'm gonna pass in the temperature, temperature. And then the same thing down here, C2F, and I'm going to pass in the temperature. Okay, let's see if this works. Enter the temperature, 100 Celsius. And it says you entered 100 Celsius, and it doesn't do anything down here, because these don't do anything, right? These these functions just invoke and then they say pass, they don't do anything. Now, if 
Your function here, F to C, takes in a temperature in Fahrenheit. What is it going to return back? It's going to return back a temperature in Celsius, right? So let's actually start to build this function here. So I'm going to say temperature in Celsius, and I'm going to assign that to, and I don't know, what's the formula to do this? I think it's temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32, it's that, times 5 ninths. So this is the formula that if you give me a temperature in Fahrenheit, notice I don't even care about this code. This code doesn't matter because this, is a, this function is in, is in its own little world. It has its own input here. And then I take that input temperature in, in Fahrenheit here. Then I subtract 32. Then I multiply it by 5 ninth. Then I get a temperature in Celsius. And this is what I want to output. So the way you output something from a function is use return. Return says, you know, return to sender. So I want to return temp in C. So I might want to try this function. I don't want to use this code down here. I'm going to um, open up another cell and I just want to try this to see if it works. So I'm going to run it first to make sure you didn't break anything. So it runs, right? And then let's try it. F2C, 212, right? So 212 Fahrenheit should be 100 Celsius. That works. Let's try it this way. 32 Fahrenheit is zero Celsius. Cool. Seven, 68 Fahrenheit is about, it's close to 20 Celsius. Oh, it is 20 Celsius. How about that? Awesome. All right. Those are the only three conversions I know in my head. So I'm going to assume that this is working well, right? So I give it a number here. What happens here? I give it this number here. When I call the function, I give it this number. And then it goes up here and it says, run this. But temp in F is now 68. And so it's 68 minus 32 multiplied by 5 ninths. It comes up with a number, 20, and then it returns 20. And that's what comes back from this. So if I were to do this and say C equals that, and then print C, the same thing happens. This time I'm calling the function and assigning it to a variable. Before it was just calling the function and seeing the output of the function. All right, that seems to work well. So let's try it up here, temp in C. So the formula for this would be, um, it would be temp in F, and that's going to be, and if I look it up, it's 9 fifths times temp in C minus 32. And I'm really particular about my parentheses, so I'm going to surround that parentheses to guarantee that this happens first and then I subtract out my 32. That's how it's supposed to be. And then what do I want to output here? I want to output temp in F. Now before I can go use that down here to see if it actually works, I need to run this again. I need to execute this so that the, the changes that I made are saved in Python and then I can try it out down here. So let's try it out. C to F and oh, I don't know, let's see, 100 degrees Celsius should be 212 Fahrenheit. Okay, that did not work. I think I might have did something wrong. Oh, it's plus 32, not minus 32. Oh, geez. All right. Now, if I run this, if I change it up here, this is great, because if I change this minus to a plus up here and then just run this, it's still wrong because I have to actually rerun this cell so that Python knows about the, the changes that I made. Now, if I hit it all in one cell, it would be fine, but it's kind of hard to write it that way. When I'm done, I can put it all in one cell and just have one program that works. All right, let's see if it works now. 212, good. So let's try it again. Zero Celsius is 32, and 20 Celsius is 68. Good. Good, it's working, it's working. So these two healthy abstractions that I made are correct. They work, so I don't need this cell anymore. I guess I can just delete it, cut it. So now the, this works the way I want, this works the way I want. Now I can write my program to use them and then finish this problem out. So this, I pass in temp as the input, right? And then this little machine up here, right? You pass it in and then it outputs a temp in Fahrenheit. So I'm just going to say uh, F equals that. And then what would I print out? I should probably print something out like percent dot one F in C is percent dot one F F. And I should pass into this 
the two temperatures, which would be temp and C, or F, temp and F. So let me try this for F to start. I'm going to just do this case first. I'm going to run it. Enter temperature, 212. That's Fahrenheit. It says 212 Celsius is 100 Fahrenheit. Okay, so something's not right in my thinking here. Let's see. I entered, I want, oh, I entered it in Fahrenheit. So it should be, this should say F, and then this one should say C. Jeez. Oh, I think that makes more sense, right? Because I'm entering in, I said, you, you entered Fahrenheit. So then print the temperature as Fahrenheit is this converted temperature as Celsius. This should say C, not F. C for Celsius, right? Because this has F to C, so it should be outputting a Celsius. So C. All right, I think I've got it figured out. Let's run it again. Temperature, 212 Fahrenheit. That's 100 Celsius. Okay, let's try it again. Temperature, 32 Fahrenheit. That's zero Celsius. Okay, that's working. Okay. I kind of don't need this line anymore because it's reiterated down here. So I'm going to take that out. That doesn't really make any sense anymore. I don't need to show this, then show that. Okay. And let's finish it off now. Let's say this is F, and this should be print. And it's going to be the same thing. It's going to say percent dot one, and then C, because you entered a Celsius, is percent dot one F F temp F. Let's see if that works. Enter temperature, 100 Celsius. Ooh, I cannot do that. It says unsupported format character. What did I do wrong here? Oh, I forgot. I got percent dot one, but I don't have an F. There we go. That looks better. 100 Celsius. 100 Celsius is 212 Fahrenheit. Just to show that it works, let's run it again. 20 Celsius is 68 Fahrenheit. Awesome. So in effect, that's it. I mean, I could also add a try accept in here to kind of put some polish on here, right? I could, where's the error going to occur when you try to convert the float, right? This is always going to work, but I've captured that down here. I can't convert that. I'll show you. 100. I can't convert that. And then if I run it again, and I enter this for a temperature, it blows up with a value error. And it blows up with a value error because I'm trying to do this conversion here, right there. I can't convert it to a float. I can't convert this to a float. So what I need to do is my try accept. Again, I would just say try this, right? And I highlight all that, move it over, and then accept when you get a value error. You always want to catch the specific error. It's dangerous to just say accept here. It's not a good idea because it might accept an error that you didn't encounter. You want to let any other error other than a value error show up in here. Like for example, if I remove this F, I was getting a different error, a format error. I want to make sure I see that. And then let's print that is not a temperature. Let's give it a shot. That is not a temperature. Okay. So that's it. So hopefully you have an idea and a good sense of how to write functions. And the, again, the, the, the idea behind a function is it's an, it's an abstraction. So I can write the code that does all this without having to know how to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius and Celsius to Fahrenheit. I can figure that part out later. And that's what I did, and then I wrote them up here. And you can always stub out your functions, which is what I did where I had F to C and then I had pass in here, and then that way, you can still write this program independent of that. When you're thinking about working in teams, this is useful. You can have one person write the functions and test those, and another person write this code, and you don't have to wait for each other because you can in turn just stub the functions out until that person's done. Now, most functions that you write are more than just two lines of code, like this is just simply two lines of code, but we'll see more functions later on in more end-to-end -end examples, and there'll be bigger functions and have more abstract logic in them. But this is a great start for functions. Okay, hopefully you learned a lot, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye now.